Hey there guys, go with the Calum 23 back again with the next part of my uh, in-depth Blu-ray overview. Uh, last week we did, uh, or last time we did a uh, Sony Collector series and this time we'll start with slipcovers. Basically the reason I kind of keep all my slipcovers together is because because if the slipcover is in between two like regular amarets, it can kind of kind of squash the slipcover and kind of damage it a bit. So I thought I'd put them all together. I have some really nice uh, slipcovers in this or in this uh, uh, collection. So we'll start with 21 Jump Street. I won't, ta I won't take the slipcovers off because mo most of the time you can see what the slipcover is just in on video. But again, surprise me how funny this film was, and a lot of and a lot of a lot of people's uh, best of. Was it 2012? Last year was it? A year before? I think it was last year. Yeah. Again, really, really funny. Just great references to the original original show. Just really, just really well done comedy. And we have uh, 2012 with a really nice slip cover in Boston stuff. Uh, directed by Roland Emmerich. Has that guy ever directed a film that isn't like a disaster movie? <laughs> and a really quite nice slip cover. And I got this for I think it was five pounds at. Um, a blockbuster, so that's a pretty good deal. And we have Amazing Spider-Man. Like, I absolutely love this slip cover. All this kind of suit is embossed and stuff. Really, really nice. I haven't watched this one yet. I'm not a big fan of the uh, the Raimi trilogy, but I've heard this one is more. It's a little bit darker, and just well, some people saying it's that a little bit better. But are we the judge of that? And then we have American Pie Reunion or American Reunion. Again, another film that surprised me how good this was. I Means when you kind of revisit a a really popular kind of comedy franchise, uh, the can either it can either go really well or really bad. But this one went really well, and it's just like the, the humour in, in the first three films. And then we have uh, the Angels Share, directed by Ken Loach. Um, again, really good uh, Scottish kind of, I guess. Yeah, drama with a, some very funny comedy aspects in it. That guy is very funny in the film. And um, again, Ken Loach is just really, really. He's one of those directors that kind of pick that kind of picks out people that kind of doesn't have too much acting experience. It kind of breaks them into the industry. I thought I think that's really good. Uh, him and uh, Andrea Arnold would do that really well. And uh, that's Angel Share about his uh, guys who plan to steal basically there's this uh, auction going off for this like really expensive scotch or is it whiskey yeah whiskey I think it is and then um, they have and they kind of decided to kind of do a heist and kind of steal this stuff it's really really funny though and then we have uh, the art of, or something from nothing the art of rap the reason I put it in the A is because on the side it's, you can see art of rap more prominently and then I started watching this once but I, it's not that it wasn't very good, but I just uh, didn't uh, continue watching it. But I uh, got some really good uh, interviews in this, of interviewees in this. And then we have a first lenticular in my collection. Oh, the, well, the first alphabetically anyway. Uh, you can't really see that, but anyway. Uh, really good Nicolas Cage film. I mean, if you're going to go see Nicolas Cage film, you know what you're, what you're going to expect. And this is based, well, kind of a... Is it based on a remake of um, the Abel? Is it? No, he directs this one. Uh, did he direct the original? I can't remember. With a Harvey Keitel. Again, really kind of batshit crazy stuff in this, but really enjoyable. And then we have uh, Bait 3D. Again, I haven't checked this out yet. I mainly got it for the because uh, it was a really cool slipcover, and I'm quite a fan of uh, kind of shark shark movies. And this one is a shark movie, so yeah. Uh, then we have uh, Batman Begins. With this is the I think the first or the second uh, re-release uh, with a really kind of really kind of minimal slip covers, but I really like them. It's just one shot with a white background. And then we have uh, the Dark Knight again, kind of one shot with a dark background, uh, white background. I'm hoping that they might bring out a slip cover like this for Dark Knight Rises, but I'm not holding any hope. But I'm sure. I hope they do just to kind of complete my collection of those. And then we have one of my favourite comedy films of all time. We have Borat, uh, uh, starring Sacha Baron Cohen and directed by Larry Charles. Again, really, really a hilariously funny kind of hidden camera kind of, I guess, a spoof movie. 
No, it's not really a spoofy movie, it's just a really, really funny comedy movie. Uh, Bruno, uh, being the next one, isn't as good, but this one is very hilarious. One of the best, probably one of, if not the best movie experiences I've ever had. Just people were laughing in exactly the right places, I was laughing along with them, just a really good cinema experience. So that's got kind of, kind of a place in my heart. And then we have uh, Buried, it's really kind of cool slipcover, the buried is embossed, it's all kind of, it's like made out of recycled card, I don't think it's recycled, but kind of really nice cardboard. Again, amazingly good film, I watched this the other, day, uh, the other week and I absolutely loved it again. It's very, very good, it's basically Ryan Reynolds in a box for an hour and a half, but it's like one of the most tense films you'll ever see in your life, it's absolutely amazing. That ending still gets me to this day, it's absolutely it's just absolutely amazing. And then we have uh, Lapita, Castle in the Sky. Again, the reason I got it in C is because it's Castle in the Sky. I can't even bother with all the subtitle bullshit. Not the subtitle bullshit, but all, you know, the, the, the regular titles and the undertitle, subtitle, whatever. Again, po possibly my favourite um, Ghibli, uh, Ghibli film. Uh, again, really good com uh, comedy. Um, cinema experience with this. It was kind of in the afternoon, it was a really nice day, it, it wasn't too loud, I was just enjoying it, and so that's why I like it like it that much. And then we have a Control, directed by Anton Corbine, uh, based on the uh, life of Ian Curtis. Again, really good film this, uh, shot in black and white, and it's just kind of chronicles the life of Ian Curtis, and it's really, really good. And then we have uh, Coraline with this uh, lenticular slip cover. Now, I did have to kind of buy the slip cover separately because I really did want it. But um, when I got it, it didn't come with it, which is which is all right because like sometimes slip covers are kind of um, kind of made in limited quantities. But anyway, I'm not going to start crying about it. But anyway, really good uh, animated uh, film. Was it directed by Henry Selick, I think? Yeah, directed by Henry Selick, who also directed um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Cause a lot of people think that Tim Burton directed that, but he didn't. But anyway, absolutely amazing animation, and uh, went to see it at the cinema, really enjoyed it. And then we have uh, Date Night, starring Tina Fey and Steve Carell. Uh, really uh, pretty good, not amazing, but pretty good uh, kind of comedy film. Kind of basically they go to a, re a, uh, a restaurant, and um, and they get, mis well they kind of take this, this couple's table, and they get mistaken for a, for two people who, um, Kind of think stole some money for some people or something, and they're kind of they're kind of mistaken for these people, and there's kind of a uh, whole chase around the city. The thing I always say about this film is, if you if you're not a fan of Steve of uh, Steve Carell or Tina Fey, there really is nothing in this for you because it's it's very heavy with those two. They're really pretty funny. Then we have uh, the Dictator, uh, the one of the. Um, only films that Sacha Baron Cohen has, all the kind of the character-driven films he has, is done, along with Ali G and the House, that are kind of an actual, you know, like with an actual plot and an actual film, as opposed to kind of hidden camera stuff. But again, really pretty damn funny. It's not kind of, kind of laugh a second like it's some like some of his films are, but it is really pretty funny. And then we have Pixar classic Finding Nemo. I absolutely love this film, and it looks absolutely stunning on Blu-ray. Okay, if you don't have this, I don't have this on Blu-ray yet. Really, really kind of seek it out because it's absolutely gorgeous on, on Blu-ray or in HD. And then we have uh, Flowers of War, directed by uh, starring Christian Bale. Uh, I haven't checked this one out yet, but um, I'm a big fan of, uh, of uh, Hero, which um, the director also directed. What's his name? Uh, Zhang Yim or Zhang Yimou. A big fan of that film, so I'll hopefully be checking that out soon. Although I have to have this for quite a while. Uh, nice embossed title there. And then we have uh, an item I received in a trade from a good friend of mine, Rusty by 19. We have uh, The Grindhouse. Uh, this is The Grindhouse cut with the two films and the trailers in between. I went to see this. Oh, well, there's a story behind this. I went to see this twice at the cinema because the first, t the first time I saw it, was um, the night, it was after the night that the clocks went, I think, back or forwards, and I forgot to put my, black, uh, my uh, clock backwards or forwards, so I kind of got up thinking that I was going there really early, and then I got there kind of like nearly halfway through Planet Terror, so 
so I kind of saw it again just to get the kind of the whole experience. Again, really good. Um, I do kind of prefer the films on their own because they don't have all that the fake kind of missing real stuff, which is pretty pretty funny on the Grindhouse cut, but it's kind of annoying. And then we have a very Harold and Kumar Christmas 3D. It obviously contains a 2D as well. And a big fan of the uh, Harold and Kumar films. First one, absolutely amazing. Second one, not quite as good, but still pretty damn good. And this one I haven't checked out yet, so I can't really um, can't really um, pass judgment on it. And uh, next up we have a uh, Heat, starring Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and Val Kilmer, directed by Michael Mann. Uh, again, haven't uh, never seen this, but I've heard nothing but good things about it. Uh, but probably never seen it because it's like over, it's like just under three hours. So uh, again, gonna have to kind of sit down and watch it. And then we have uh, the Hobbit 3D. Also with a 2D, so I got a not very good angle there. And again, I watched this again the other week, and that just really, really good. Of course, now they're bringing out the extended version, which is, which is, I mean, we knew it was coming, but it's still kind of annoying. I got this and the Steelbook as well. And then we have a hobo with a shotgun, if I can get it out, uh, starring Rutger Hauer. And uh, yeah, really good kind of. Kind of, um, kind of homage to kind of the trauma, kind of grindhouse films of the seventies. Again, really, really good. Uh, really, kind of shocking violence in this. The uh, the uh, uh, school bus scene is <laughs> it's kind of batshit crazy. And uh, next up, well, actually, last one for this part will do. And uh, we have a uh, Horton Here's a Who DreamWorks animation. Again, I remember seeing this at the cinema, really, really enjoying it. I think it might have been one of my favourite films of that year, whichever year it came out. Again, really good voice acting, really good animation, just really good altogether, kind of really good family film. And that'll do for this part. Now, yeah, that'll do for this part anyway. So, uh, yeah, next up we'll get to the eyes. And until then, please rate, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.